Did you just find your portable gas grill? Or did someone give you one? Or did you borrow one? And you opened it up and it looked like this. You got a little bit of work ahead of you. So in today's video, we're going to show you how to clean, prepare, and test your portable gas grill. So you've kind of had a bit of a preview of what's waiting for us in here. Well, let's have a good look at it. We know we're going to be cleaning, so we're going to be needing this, but later. So first thing we want to take a look at, let's take a look at the grill. I want to check to see if it's rusted up or if there's anything that's broken. Keep in mind that this is where your food product is sitting, so you don't want to have bare rusty metal. This one, by the look of it, doesn't seem to be rusted. It just needs a really good thorough cleaning. I think it's probably in pretty good shape. Our next piece we're going to want to look at is the baffle that goes over the burner. This is a little cruddy. It's a little rusty, but it's not bad. There's no holes in it that shouldn't be there. This particular grill has a drip tray. So you want to check that, make sure and get it all nice and cleaned out. Make sure it has no holes rusted in it. Uh, look to see where it's mounted because usually that's the one place where they like to tend to rust and fall out. Uh, your burner, you're going to want to Take and if, if it's already mounted in and secured and bolted like this one is, that's fine. You don't have to take it out, but you do want to do an inspection on it. So just talk about the base for a minute. We're going to have to clean all this good stuff out when we don't have the debris in the way. We're going to want to take a look at it, make sure it's not cracked or split or holes. If so, then we'll have to make a decision whether this is worthwhile doing or if it just needs that cleaning. So one thing most gas grills have that you'll either love or hate is your igniter. So part of your igniter and ignition system is your push button. This may be just a matter of an electronic generated type of just push it and makes a spark. Others require batteries. Uh, whichever version you have, if it's batteries, make sure your batteries are good. Uh, if not, then you'll just be able to push your button and you should see that nice strong arc. So as a portable unit, they typically all have some way of bringing them up off of your work surface. So they're going to have legs of one form or another. This one's pretty cool. It's got folding legs. So you just want to make sure that they're functioning properly, that they're not rusted or broken. So whichever form of leg yours has, just check to make sure it's in good condition. So one of the key pieces of any gas grill, big or small, is your fuel tank and your fuel regulator. Now in this one, this regulator just threads off the burner. Yours may attach in a different format with a clip or a prong, but there'll always be an opening in your burner, so you'll want to just check and make sure that's clear as well. Uh, this just allows air to get in for your flame, so if that's blocked off, you get really poor performance, so you'll make sure that that's cleaned out. Wherever it makes a connection to your tank, you'll want to look to make sure that the little hole is clear and that this one has an, a rubber ring in it, just like a garden hose has. So you'll just want to check and make sure that that's in good condition, that it's in place and it's not torn. Your cylinders are pretty straightforward. They'll come with a plastic cap on them when you get them new. Uh, just take those off and you just want to make sure if you had it kicking around for a while that the threads are in good condition and this isn't disformed or bent or dented. If it has, don't use it. So we've gone through all the components and actually everything's in pretty good shape on this one. It just really needs a good cleaning. So we're going to gather up the pieces, take them outside, give it a good cleaning, then we'll put it back together and try it out. So we're outside now where I can make as much mess as I want to get this guy cleaned up. So I'm going to just basically remove the interior components, take my shop back, suck out all that big gnarly stuff out of the bottom, make sure everything does look good in there, and then I'll do the other pieces separately. Well, that worked well. We got the big chunks out of it. I'm just going to give it a little bit of a wipe with the cloth. I'm not looking to get this back to being like brand new, never used. I just want to make sure that everything that's loose and chunky is out of there and so that when we are using it, we've got a good flame pattern and we've got good air circulation to be able to have some even cooking. 
So now we've got the inside all cleaned up, got the big chunks out of it and the flaky stuff. It actually looks pretty good. So I'm just going to set this aside and I'm going to bring up the, uh, the burner baffle, the heat shield, get that cleaned up and we'll see how that turns out. So here's our heat shield. Just going to take a brush and get rid of the big chunks off it first. Now that we got the big ugly stuff off, I'm just going to switch over to using my scouring sponge and some hot soapy water. Well, that's a huge improvement from what it was. We'll let that dry and I'll go to work on the rack. A lot of people tend to use SOS pads or even wire brushes for cleaning these racks. I prefer not to, primarily because something that abrasive is actually going to take the coating off this rack. Once that coating's gone, then this rack's going to start to rust up pretty bad and basically be useless and have to be replaced. So I'm going to go again with my sponge with the scouring pad, hot soapy water, and you'll see what a difference it makes. So now that the rack's clean, I'm just going to set it aside so it can dry. We'll grab that drift tray, give it a wipe out, and we'll go from there. So now that we got this cleaned up, I'm just going to set it aside to dry, and then we can think about putting it back together. So now that we have it all set and ready to put back together, this is the best opportunity to take a look at that electrode. So since we were in there wiping everything down and moving all the gunk around, just take a cloth and look at where your electrode is. And if there's any dirt or grime on it, just give that a little wipe so that when it goes to spark, it's not going to jump anywhere else except for that burner. I'm just going to jump back to something we were talking about earlier, and that was talking about having your burner clean. And those little tiny holes that go all the way around, just as you inspect them, if you do find anything in them, it's just a matter of taking a toothpick, just putting it into the hole and clean out whatever is in there. If you make sure that all those holes are clean, you will have a great flame pattern, you'll have even cooking, and you'll be really happy with your grill. Now all the pieces we cleaned are ready to go back in, so let's get at it. First thing, I'm just going to put the drip tray back in place. Put in our baffle for our burner. And then our nice clean rack. So it's pretty well ready to go. Our next step will be we'll hook up our fuel canister, do some leak checking, and then we'll see if it works. Now I've got some leak test fluid here. I use it for checking gas joints. Very expensive. You don't need that. I just happen to have it. Dishwasher soap, liquid, a little bit of water, mix it up in a glass. Just take and pour a little bit over where the bottle connects. And if there's any kind of a leak, it's going to blow a nice bubble for you. If you see a bubble, you got trouble. No bubbles, no troubles. This one's looking good. There's no bubbles, so I'm more than comfortable to fire this thing up. So now that we know there's no leaks, it's not gonna go boom, let's give it a try and see if it lights. And it does. So there's our old neglected grill brought back to life. We cleaned it out, we prepared it, we put it back together, leak tested it lights first time every time so thank you very much for joining us today i hope that the tips that we shared with you allow you to get your gas grill up and running and ready to go